hi everyone uh, welcome back to my channel uh, my name is jason matthew in this video i'm going to talk about a feature called uh, lwa so i already covered uh, some of the web authentication methods available on uh, uh, this wlc in some other video uh, here i'm going to strictly um, talk about uh, lwa that is local web authentication when we talk about guest access we use uh, two different type of uh, methods to give that uh, guest access one is lwa and uh, second one is cwa so when we say lwa uh, it's a local web authentication and when we say cwa it's a central web authentication so when we say uh, lwa uh, we have uh, multiple methods available so let's talk about uh, one by one and uh, strictly this video is for lwa only and cwa i'll be coming up with a different video for that so uh, let's get started with uh, basics. So the first thing, uh, what is the global configuration on your uh, WLC for uh, web authentication? So for that, you can go to uh, security. Under that, you have web authentication and web uh, login page. As I mentioned, uh, if you are doing local uh, web authentication uh, using means, your WLC is going to do the uh, local authentication. In that case, uh, we have uh, three different um, authentication types. So the first one is internal, the default one. And if you want to see the preview, you can click on it. And this is the uh, login page you are going to get it. And uh, second one is um, a customized uh, uh, WebAuth bundle. So I covered this one, how to use the customized uh, downloaded WebAuth bundle. So you can actually go to uh, Cisco site and download the WebAuth bundle and make the customization. And I already covered uh, how to edit that uh, WebAuth bundle and all those things uh, in a different video. So you can follow that. And uh, next available option is external redirect. So in this case, even though the local uh, web authentication, um, the authentication is happening locally on the WLC, still uh, it will be redirected to an external server. Basically, uh, if you want to do an authentication, you have to, someone has to uh, present the login page and login page has to be um, ended with the username and password. Then, then only it will go into the next state of run state of the client uh, state machine. Uh, if uh, WLC is doing everything uh, in a, um, bigger deployment or large deployment kind of scenario you will end up in having a condition that uh, wlc's uh, resources are getting utilized for this web authentication web authentication means uh, to provide the uh, tcp session open for the uh, client and uh, based on number of clients it's uh, the resources are getting utilized for that so to avoid that um, even if you are using LWA, uh, there is a recommended uh, way to use a uh, external redirection. Uh, means uh, some uh, external server uh, other than WLC will host the page and it will um, it will be presenting the uh, login page. So I'll be covering that model uh, in this one and I'll be uh, showing uh, the difference also on that. So these are the uh, three different uh, uh, authentication types uh, available on WLC as a global configuration. Now let's talk about the uh, WLAN configuration. So to save some time, I already created uh, my uh, test bed uh, with one SSID that is LWA. So LWA uh, stands for uh, local web authentication, right? So I use the same thing for profile name and SSID name. Let's go into the WLAN. Uh, so we are inside the WLAN. You can see the configuration, basically profile name and all. In the security side, uh, L2 authentication is none. Always for uh, L3 authentication, we will disable um, the L2 authentication. And MAC filtering is also disabled here. So this is not a CWA, it's a LWA. So uh, MAC address filtering is not used for this model. Uh, if you want to use it, you can use it, but uh, right now we are not using it. On L3 side, I'm enabling a web authentication. And there is an ACL uh, configured here. So this is the pre-auth ACL I configured for this particular uh, video. I will show you this uh, access list uh, shortly. And uh, this is the way I configured the L3 configuration. Then um, in replay server, I configured my I server on both the sides. Uh, basically, the login page is presented by WLC, but uh, in the background, you will be able to use um, IIS as a radius server. So basically, uh, a uh, replay server will be configured. WLC will be giving the authentication page, but uh, the user identity store is, uh, is still on IIS. Uh, IIS means IIS is acting as a radius server here. 
nothing else it's not uh, giving the login page so in advanced page i didn't change anything uh, in this configuration everything is the default configuration i didn't change anything uh, in the advanced page so only changes i i did is uh, l2 authentication i made it none mac filtering i disabled it then l3 configuration l3 authentication i added uh, authentication then acl is also applied nothing else then AAA configuration i actually uh, put this authentication service this is also not required uh, you can even keep it as none so uh, it's uh, up to you so if you want to map it you can map it if it's not mapped then the default configuration under uh, security will be used so here you have the authentication server configured you have accounting server configured so this configuration will uh, take over because if you want to override something on the wlan then you make changes if, if you have multiple psns or radius servers in your uh, network and if you want to add that into different different ssids or something you can override it otherwise the global configuration is sufficient then we talked about the access list so in the access list i created one access list so i given uh, access list name this is the default access list name used by uh, eyes in any cws scenario so i just use the same name and uh, you can see this configuration on the um, on your uh, acl side so basically uh, what you have to keep it in mind is uh, you have to allow your dscp server you have to allow your dscp client so none of these traffic should not be blocked then you should allow uh, DNS in both the directions. You can see this, uh, both the direction it's going out and uh, coming back. Then after that, uh, you have uh, your login portal. As I told you, I, I'm going to cover two scenarios. One is with uh, external radius server, and I will be covering one more um, external radius server as ICE, because ICE will be having a portal, and that portal will be coming as a login page. So for showing that, I already added my um, my local server uh, that is used as a uh, external redirect and i also added my um, i server for external redirect so i have that set up ready so this is the acl for that so basically you have to enable uh, dscp dns and the communication between your uh, guest and i server Okay, so this is my ACL all about. Um, then um, let's uh, get into the uh, testing uh, side. So LWA is my SSID. Let's uh, get connected to this LWA. So right now uh, it's a plain uh, web authentication uh, with a local local web page. So let's see how it works in the uh, background with the client. So as you can see here, I don't have any clients here. So I'm going to connect one of the clients into this particular SSID. This is my client. As you can see, this particular uh, guy is not connected to any SSID, but I'm running a continuous ping in the background so that uh, you'll be able to see uh, this communication is getting started once your authentication is completed. So let's get connected to that SSID. So as you can see here, uh, LWA is the SSID we are going to connect. So let me click on connect here. So once this connection is established, you'll be able to see uh, some changes. So you can see that request is getting timed out. So uh, that means you got the IP address, but you are not able to communicate to you, uh, your uh, uh, devices. So, so let's uh, see the IP configuration. So as you can see, uh, you got the IP address, you got the gateway, but you are not able to communicate to uh, your gateway. So 129 is my gateway, but it's not able to communicate to that gateway. So let's uh, go into any web page. So for that, uh, you all, uh, most of the guys knows that uh, WLC is going to interrupt your DNS traffic. That's why we are allowing that DNS traffic on your uh, ACL. So I'm going to generate a DNS traffic uh, in a browser. I'm going to type cisco.com. So I typed the cisco.com, actually that cisco.com got converted into a redirection page. So basically this is my virtual IP, uh, virtual IP of my WLC that is uh, there in the controller interfaces. You can see the virtual IP here. So this is the virtual interface on my WLC. And this is the uh, uh, interface used for this redirection. So as you can see here, this IP is used here. 
and um, it's asking for uh, redirection into this page now uh, let's um, try to log in into the system so uh, even in logging in uh, you have two uh, two options available so the first identity store that you can uh, use is uh, security uh, under security you have local net user means the users uh, present in your uh, wlc itself so i have a username created here that is lwa user and uh, this user is uh, capable of connecting to any uh, WLAN profile. So let me use the same uh, username uh, for authentication on the first time. I'm going to type uh, my username LWA hyphen user. Then, so I type the password. I'm going to click on submit. As you can see, this web authentication was uh, successful. So uh, because of the successful authentication, you are able to uh, see the traffic is going through. Let's go to WLC and see this particular client. So uh, as you can see here, this particular client is authenticated using username of uh, LWA user. And it's actually uh, in run state. As you can see here, the policy manager is uh, going in run state and it's able to pass the traffic. So this is one method using the internal uh, username and password. This the same client. We will do one more thing. We will uh, deauthenticate this client from uh, this WLC, so that uh, we will be able to test out the radius authentication. Now this client is uh, deauthenticated from the WLC, and you can see that this communication is not going through again. So we'll uh, go for uh, same again. So. We will get a login page. Uh, this time I'm going to use a username as Jason. So this username is coming from uh, ICE. So uh, uh, my ICE is going to act as a radius server for me. And uh, username will be taken from the user identity store of uh, your ICE, the local uh, local identity store inside uh, your ICE. So I'm going to click on submit. As you can see here, um, this one is also got uh, uh, successful login and it's able to uh, pass the traffic. And uh, same time, let's go and check this user uh, here. So as you can see here, uh, this is the username uh, we use for login. And this username is coming from ICE, uh, not the LWA. Last time, we used the LWA user from local net user. So LWA user is coming locally. But here, uh, as you can see, uh, this particular guy is coming from ICE. The JSON uh, is coming from ICE. Also, you can see this particular uh, client is uh, running um, in run state and uh, mobility role is local. So right now, everything is happening locally. Means LWA, you are doing LWA and uh, this one is happening locally. So now you know uh, how this local authentication works with uh, basic setup. This is the basic LWA setup. In LWA, we talked about three different model of uh, login um, login pages. So let's uh, try out the uh, second option. So for that, um, you have two options to customize it. You can either go to security and web both and web both login page. You can change to uh, external redirect and give the uh, redirect URL here. So this is one of the options. So the same thing. Now, it's a global configuration. If you have multiple SSIDs with the same kind of uh, authentication model, you will not be able to make this change on the uh, global side. So always, um, uh, as a recommended way, uh, instead of making the global changes, uh, if it's only one SSID, it's OK to do it on the global page. Otherwise, go to WLAN. Go to the uh, WLAN, uh, the one going to be the LWA. Go to security, L3. At, at the bottom, you can see override the global configuration. So uh, this is the one you can actually use it for override the global configuration. So global configuration was internal page. We already seen how that works. And uh, we're both uh, bundle customized one. I already covered that in a different video. So I'm not going to talk about that here. So we are going to talk about external redirect. So here I'm going to put external redirect page uh, the link uh, link for the external redirection uh, server so basically this is the server i hosted on uh, one of my servers in my lab and this is the uh, the redirect url link for that particular server to login in so what i did is i uh, downloaded the uh, the authentication uh, web authentication bundle and I customized it and I, uh, I put it in the uh, web server uh, in this particular uh, lab. 
then that is going to be used for uh, authentication. So here also this login, login authentication page, login page is going to come from that server after this change. So let's go back to the monitoring page and see is there any client. So we have a client here, the same client. I'm going to do this client for safer side to show you from scratch. Now you can see that this particular client is not connected to any SSID. Let's go and connect this guy to our uh, LWA. So let's connect to LWA. So uh, this one is got connected. Now you can see the request timeout is happening because you got the IP address. You got the IP address, but um, it's not able to communicate to anyone. Let's go into our uh, DNS redirection and you will get the login page. Now you can see there is a different login page coming in. So this uh, particular login page is coming from uh, this particular server. And uh, this is the customized web both bundle page. I uh, posted it on that server. Now here you have to give the username and uh, password. Even though this particular uh, page is coming from a different uh, server, you will be able to still use the uh, uh, local user or external user. So I'm going to do LWA hyphen user, then put my password. Then you can see that this particular guy uh, got authenticated and it's able to start the uh, traffic. Even though uh, this page is coming from a different server, but still you are able to uh, uh, use the local net user. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, this one is nothing related to the uh, external server. That external server is providing only the login page. But the actual logging is happening in your WLC and WLC is taking the full control. That's why it's called as local uh, web authentication. Now we use the local user. So let's go and see these details. So you can see LWA user is used. And here uh, you can see this particular guy is in run state. So this one is using the username of uh, LWA user. So the same setup, I'm going to remove this guy. So I removed that client from WLC. There is no w, uh, there is no uh, wireless clients now. Let's go to the client and uh, do the authentication using um, the radius server uh, username and password. So as you can see here, uh, this one is not connected to any SSID. Let's go and connect to our uh, LWA. So I connected to LWA. It got the IP and uh, request timeout is happening here. Let's go to the web page of uh, Cisco. And again, you got the same login page uh, from that external redirection uh, server. And uh, I'm going to use the uh, username and password of um, the uh, radius server or the I server. So here I use the username and password. And as you can see here, uh, this authentication is uh, working fine. And uh, let's go to the WLC and see the same username. So here I'm going to the client's page and you can see this username is applied here. So username is coming from ICE. So even if you are using external redirect, please keep this one in mind. If you're using an LWA mechanism, so this is what going to happen. Your page will come from a server but this authentication is happening locally. With this, I'm going to stop this video here uh, and I'm going to uh, continue um, the rest of the things in the part two video. This will be the part one video for LWA feature. I mean, a local web authentication feature on uh, Cisco WLC. And uh, I'll continue uh, the rest of the things in the second video. Thank you for watching.